Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And this article comes to you guys from KIWA Radio. I will leave a link to it in the description so you guys could check it out. So T-Mobile continues to ex aggressively expand its retail distribution. And this, what, this is what this article is about. So Sheldon T-Mobile store celebrates with, with ribbon cutting. So this is in uh, Sheldon, Iowa. And then it says uh, Sheldon's T-Mobile store celebrated on, on Friday with, ribbon, with a ribbon cutting. Sheldon Chamber and Development SC DC Executive Director uh, Tanya Herrera Gonzalez spoke on behalf of the SCDC and the, and the city of Sheldon. Now, what's interesting about this and very important, T-Mobile is still trying to catch up to their coverage. Meaning, for those of you who are new, newer to the channel, T-Mobile has a lot of native coverage in some small market and rural areas where they don't have any retail distribution or any presence of branding at all besides the network. So they have to work on that still. They started to close that gap during LTE, but even with the low band, when they got band 12 from Verizon, the A block that they purchased, they, they had further reach on the network than actual retail. And now they're trying to fix that and they're moving into these, these newer areas, small market towns, smaller cities, and they're moving in with retail. And not only are they moving in with retail, they're adding more retail to those areas because they're growing. So they started off with one store. Maybe, maybe they started off in a small kiosk and then they started growing the share. And now it's time for an actual brick and mortar retail location. So that's how they view that as well. Also, in areas where they have maybe some coverage, maybe it's fringe. They also not only do they have to add retail they got to expand the network further because now that you're in that area with with retail and with network, those people that are in that city and town, they travel. They travel to the next town over where you might not have any native coverage. So that's another <coughs> aspect that T-Mobile has to take into account when they when they get to these uh, small cities and, and rural areas. They have to take all that into consideration. The people, hey, we moved these people over. We got them. We got them onto our network. We got them onto fixed wireless. Now we have to make sure we keep them. So we got to expand the network further outwards beyond just the city limits or or the town's limit limits. So we can we can keep them and keep the churn as low as possible. And that's what T-Mobile calls customer driven or customer focused coverage that's what they call it but they have to put though that talk into action they really have to deploy and scale the network to uh to where it it, it really closes the gap to the competition and i know there's there's maps out there that, that are outdated right for for one the fcc map it's outdated it i think that map is like december 31st of last year now we're already what six months into the new year and t-mobile has deployed a ton of new sites in fact a lot of sites that were deployed last year even that are in the ground equipment cabinets backup generators everything are now just turning on maybe there there was a hold up on fiber whatever the case may be it takes that long sometimes for T-Mobile to even turn a site on that they built last year. It can take six to nine months. So T-Mobile's coverage already much better and different today than it was just six months ago. Now, I'm not saying or advocating that T-Mobile's coverage is, is the biggest now and it's, it's all fixed. No, they have work to do. But they're investing in areas where they know they can, they can play to win. And where they know, okay, we, we have, and that's something else that, they're, that they look at it as well. Keep that in mind. They got to look at the dates and the permitting. They know which areas, cities, towns, whatever, 
gets approval first, right? For example, Sheldon, Sheldon, Iowa. If they know, okay, this this permitting got approved first for the tower, whatever, for the for the retail location, they are probably going to invest there first versus another town where they're like, okay, we are not going to get approval for another year. And I know that's 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 simplifying it and 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 should be very common sense, but I just wanted to put that out there because that's looked at as well when in the decision making on where the capital allocation goes. They have to take all that in consideration. Like which one of these areas can I get to first with the capital spend this year, not next year. So all of that has to be taken into consideration when when T-Mobile goes through this process of analyzing, planning ahead of time, all of that goes into consideration. One thing that we do know by seeing these articles and I've, I've posted them on the channel over the months and years, they are expanding. Wherever they can um, get a retail location, sometimes they have, to, they have to even build these from the ground up. On some of them, <coughs> excuse me, they can literally just move into a strip mall or, or whatnot. But on some of them, they have to literally build them from the ground up. So that takes time. So right now, what T-Mobile needs to fully close the gap to get out to more of these areas, these small market rural areas, that they've never been in before with either network or or retail, in some cases both, they need time now. I think the biggest dent that they are going to make is over the next 12 to 18 months. I think that's going to be the biggest dent that they're going to make, make natively. And then if they do get the uh, US Cellular acquisition across the finish line, that's going to be the icing on the cake, I feel. That's 2,100 new sites that they're going to lease. Yes, they're going to need a little bit of time for the integration and to add their equipment on those sites. We saw how quickly they did that with the Sprint merger. So I'm not in the slightest concerned because we have a, we have a merger to, to, to go off of. They have a template that they can follow because they did it. They did it with Metro PCS successfully. Arguably, they closed and integrated one of the largest mergers in telecom in the history successfully right churn wasn't that bad at the beginning it spiked a little but they got that under control and now they take that same playbook and they do that with us cellular i mean they have a proven record so there's not much negative that you can say except you could say oh they're getting a little greedy they're raising price i mean if you want them as a consumer, as a tech enthusiast, if you want them to compete, have a better network, actually expand into your area, then you want them to have better margins. You want them to raise the capex. And the way that they can do that is to charge you more. Now, it's up to T-Mobile and that team to figure out how to differentiate themselves in today's market. Rather that be investing more into T-Mobile Tuesdays and the Magenta status to give you even more value through that, to add in other maybe music streaming services into the plan, bake that in, because it's no longer going to come from price. Now, they are still throwing in th uh, like a third line free and all that. I see that on their, on their promotional activity. That's still... A bit of a head scratcher for me because they're looking to better the margins they're looking to increase profits but yet in this quarter currently they're still pushing that they are cheaper by 29 to 30 percent versus the competition which is still true but i don't know how they can possibly properly balance that moving forward when they know at any given moment they might have to pull the pricing lever who knows? Equipment goes up, uh, tower sites go up, leasing goes up. They know they might have to pull the pricing lever. And it just doesn't look good when you continuously try and pull in a more price sensitive crowd because you're, you're claiming to be cheaper and then you raise price on them. So overall, I got to say from, from an overall perspective, like customer care wise, and I know that that varies between everybody, but... For me, I would say the customer care, the plan, the uh, 
the uh, the features, the perks, the price that I that I have on my plan, I got I got to give T-Mobile like a nine out of ten because I just haven't had. For one, I don't have to call customer service that much. My bill is the same every month. I just recently contacted them to see if my price increase would actually be applied, and they did confirm that with me. And that's it. And I just wanted to make sure that it's just my watch line and not my home internet because home internet technically is a connected device. They confirmed with me that told me it's just my watch line. So it's just going up by two additional dollars. So am I going to pay X amounts, right, to get out of these leasing, the, 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 the lease devices early just for $2? Uh, no, not going to do that. So... Those are just questions that you have to ask yourselves, right? Are you going to leave T-Mobile for a few dollars of an increase? Now, if you, if you're experienced, right? If you look at all these categories and you're saying, ah, customer service hasn't been that great for me. I constantly have to call them. Coverage in these areas, questionable for the price that I'm paying. Then you might have to shop around. But for those of you who say, yeah, customer service has been great. I don't, I don't even have to call them that much. Um, pricing uh, a few dollars more, it's okay. It's still cheaper than what I would get with AT&T and Verizon. And then you have to take all that into consideration, right? The plan you're on, the perk, the features. Uh, if you have home internet with T-Mobile, you're already very deep in that relationship. So many, many might not move. They might not even move an inch. So we'll see what happens. This is very interesting. T-Mobile continues to expand into new areas with retail where they already have coverage which brings further uh, competition. It brings brand recognition. People now know, hey, T-Mobile's in my market. Let me, let me check them out. So this is what competition is all about. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, follow my social media outlets. This is Tyrone with Tech Live. See y'all in the next one. Peace.